Hello and welcome to uh, April 27th, 2022. Boy, am I feeling better today. Isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting how the, the pendulum swings back and forth, you know, on uh, feeling, on how we feel. You know, one thing that's interesting about reading um, biographies is uh, how that comes through. Well, not all biographies. Journals, maybe is a better way to describe it, because I'm continuing to read um, the biography of uh, Samuel Johnson by James Boswell, which he, um, a lot of it includes letters, correspondence between Johnson and Boswell. So I know that's not a journal, that's a letter, <laughs> but still it's a, literally it's a week by week transaction. They're sending letters back and forth, and it's interesting to hear both these uh, men describe the, their own moods, how they, they swing up and down and um, their attempts to, to remedy that, their, their desire in the case of Boswell to be in the company of Johnson, who, who's very present, lifts his spirits, um, the desire of, uh, or the, the efforts of Johnson to uh, push through his own as he called it, melancholy, which is, is a type of, you know, depression. I, well, I don't know. Maybe it's 250 years back. I don't We can't claim. I, I, I'm not neither qualified, nor, nor do we have enough no, knowledge or no, to know what really was going on. You know, was it seasonal stuff? I mean, certainly Boswell up there in Scotland might be stuck with, you know, the, some seasonal blues. But anyway, my own, my own mood swing, like yesterday and Monday, I was not, by this, in the morning, I was not ready to go. I was not ready for the day of work. And that's, that happens a lot. So it's, it's, it's got a, it's got a, there's, there's like a seasons to the day, you know, like I, I, I sleep poorly in the morning. I wake up, I have a, str I struggle. These are the toughest times of the, of the day for me. Absolutely. Uh, and that's, that's not, you know, that's small, that's a small thing. I'm a very fortunate person. I don't have a lot of things that are tough in my life. So a couple of tough hours in the morning before work are not something I should complain too much about. But this is my own life reflection, right? It's, it's relative in that capacity. This endeavor is my own life reflection. This morning activity of making this video. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to you know, correct, adjust, and guide my own self towards better living. So anyway, that was interesting. Um, and I do feel better today. Well, you know, there's, like, I can trace a little bit back. Like I knew yesterday that part of the reason <clears throat> I didn't feel good was that I didn't get enough sleep the night before. I went to bed late. So this last night I was sure to get, I was in bed at nine o'clock and my lights out uh, shortly thereafter. I mean, I, I, I lay down on the pillow and I'm just gone. I did wake up this morning, probably sometime within an hour, <laughs> see, <laughs> before dawn. I couldn't really gauge it because it was kind of, there's clouds in the, and I couldn't see where Venus was because that's, Venus is usually my guide. Wherever Venus is above the horizon, I know how close it is to my alarm going off. Also, I had a, had a kick butt day at work yesterday. I mean, just... That can't last. <laughs> really good day. Knocked off so many things. Was able to tackle a really challenging issue. Help tackle that. I didn't solve it myself, but I facilitated. I facilitated the solving. I did. I did a critical piece in getting. I got the doctor to the. I got the doctor to, to the patient, <laughs> so to speak. And the doctor made the diagnosis, and now it can. Now they can be made well. And then, um, otherwise, it was a very nice day. Nice walk and with the dogs and uh, together with my wife and at lunch. Nice evening with, you, with the family. Yumiko made another rock star dinner. Wow, that was really good last night. She really knows how to top the evening. So, by the way, this is my daily endeavor. I do this every morning to... Uh, Talk about my uh, good life creed, the seven objectives and thirty principles that I use to guide my to guide my life, to gauge my life, to 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 
help move me forward. And then also to see how I'm doing applying that to yesterday and today. I think I talked enough about yesterday and last night. Let's let's talk about one more thing, just relative to that, a new thing. My um, my little chart here. So I'm starting to keep track of my days so that I can measure my weeks. The criteria, so the, there's, here it is, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And next to each day gets a, a circle or uh, maybe I'll just do a circle or an X. You know, a circle means I met my goals. X means I didn't. And the circle would be a green a green dot on the, on the Memento Mori death clock. And a black one would mean, I mean, a, any, even one X in a day means a black mark. I didn't make it. So yesterday, remember my criteria for getting a circle is that I have to make at least one video and upload it to YouTube. This video counts. And I made two yesterday. This, I made The Good Life, and I also made a little literary reference to uh, a John Smith uh, bit that I was reading from the, from the 17th century. And then, uh, then I also, the other thing is, so video, journal entry, and at least reading 10 pages of anything. So I did that. I did the journal. I did the video. I did the journal yesterday. And I read 10 pages uh, of exactly of, um, excuse me, The Life of Samuel Johnson. And then I read about seven pages in the other book. So I get a circle. Okay, let's do The Good Life. Seven objectives. 30 principles. Here we go. Sit first. The first objective is to uh, be always ready to die. To have all of my life in a state of readiness for my passing, sudden. Or not even if it's sudden, even if it's slow, if I find out that I have cancer and I have to immediately go in for chemotherapy. I'm not going to be in a state, a state to uh, do much of anything after that, I think. So I'll have things in, re in order and readiness. Two is to make good and effective use of time. To not waste my days. That's why I do this thing with the circles and the X, right? Because that's what I've decided that at this point in my life qualifies as a good day. I mean, the family and the, the, the work, that's all given, right? I have to do that, and I have, I have no problem. I've never had an issue attending to my responsibilities uh, in, a, in, a, in a meaningful manner in, in an, in taking these things seriously. That's never been an issue for me, so I don't even have to have it on the scale. Instead, it's more for the uh, expressive and fun stuff. That's, I should add something for fun, because that's something I don't do. Way too serious. I'll think about it. Number three is uh, to develop and maintain good and sound life principles. That's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm reciting my good life. Next is to um, um, cultivate good emotional reactions. To become a person who reacts well to life and doesn't fly off the handle. Maintains my balance and equanimity. Next is to um, perform good actions, just to do good things throughout the day. Next is to recognize my true limits, my true opportunities, so that I can uh, uh, work around the things that are not possible, not doable, not wantable, even. Because you could, well, you could want it, but 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 my my character and my Values may prescribe otherwise. That's what I mean. And then also to find the things that I can do, that I should do, that I want to do, that I need to do, and find a way to attend to those. Especially the need to's. Next is the... Um, uh, to do... To do perform the performance of good actions. Just to do good things throughout the day. Good things, where good things are defined as activities that help to contribute to my purpose, which is, in summary, the pursuit of the well-being of thinking creatures. 
that flowed out quite nicely. I never said it was like that. I kind of connected an objective and a principle together and found a made a nice little bridge with a keystone that could last for the ages. <laughs> hmm. The words come easier when I'm well rested. I really struggle. <laughs> there you go. Next is um, after the uh, performance of good action. Oh, I already talked about it, the recognition of true limits and true opportunity. The last objective is to just do one thing at a time and to do that thing slowly. To never multitask, to never rush, unless I'm being uh, chased by a hippopotamus. I don't know why I'm just, in my mind, I have a scene of a hippo, hippo chasing me. And I was kind of entertaining that thought, thinking, would it be better to run from the hippo or be it better to hold my ground? Because I don't think I can outrun a hippo. But maybe I can. I don't think holding my ground is going to do any good. I don't think I'm going to stand down a hippo. Well, I'm certainly not going to beat it in a fight. In that case, I better run like hell. My 30 principles. Number one is the principle of war. To cultivate a, a frame of mind and outlook, disposition and uh, way of thinking that uh, allows me to fight against the things that I already believe, namely. And of course to fight against the things that other people propose that I should believe if it's important. I'm not worried about mundane claims like they've got a new puppy, but I am worried about serious claims, such as uh, I need to believe what they believe if I'm going to uh, avoid a terrible place called hell. I, I'll fight against that. Not not to disprove it, but I'm to challenge the, those that are making the claim to support that claim and demonstrate that it's true in a reasonable manner. Likewise, will I demand the same of myself for anything that I I claim or hold as in support? That's, you know, the most... The most uh, interesting one for me is the fact that I believe that free will is an illusion. I fight that all the time, and I, I, I know that I'm on shaky ground. I know that I can't prove it's true. Yet I am convinced, nonetheless. So I, I engage in a war. An ongoing war. <laughs> against this proposition of free will being an illusion. So this war is a very important thing to me. It's my first principle because it's the way that I want to interact with the world. I want to be always engaged in the interesting questions and I think important questions of existence and, and, and meaning and interaction and the good use of our lives. All that for one principle. 29 to go. Here we go. Number two is the uh, principle of reason, and it has three sub-principles, uh, honesty, ob objectivity, and doubt. So I want to be a reasonable human being by being objective in the way I look at things, um, honest with myself and others, and um, a skeptic, a fierce skeptic, so that I uh, suffer everything to go through the gauntlet. I have a proposition to fly through the gauntlet before I will. Tentative, even tentatively accepted as true. Any important proposition, at least. Number three is the uh, homunculus. A simple a word, not a simple word. It's a strange word, but it describes, it's my term for the consciousness that I've got, that I like to picture, uh, like I'm being a little man inside my head, uh, peeking out between my, from behind my eyes, listening through my ears. In my book, Going Alone, Emily made a really nice drawing of the homunculus for uh, one of the chapters. The next principle goes hand in hand with the homunculus. The next principle is called the, the uh, anchor hold, which I borrowed from, uh, you know, Christian um, history. 
of the uh, anchorites that would and anchoritises, I guess the women would be called, that would wall themselves into the into the side of a literally wall themselves, seal themselves away, like the cast of a montilago from Poe, into the into the into a, the side of a church with a little. Uh, they called it a squint, a little hole that they could look out of to which to watch the service and people would pass them food through that and they would spend their lives uh, walled up in the in the church in a small little hole in the church um, living and spending their lives in prayer and um, I believe that's how our consciousness is it's walled up inside of us trapped inside our skulls supported by this infrastructure and these anchorites would actually do that. They usually would not become anchorites until they had the means to be able to pay for somebody to come and provide them with food and take away their waste every day. But that's how I see my homunculus, my consciousness, walled up inside. The most important thing being that um, when the homunculus, when I die, the homunculus is dying with me. My consciousness will wink out when my blood pressure drops to a certain sufficient level that my heart I, the, it, you know, my brain ceases. That's the end of the homunculus. And I do not believe that it goes anywhere because I do not believe that there's any reason for a soul. There's absolutely no good reason to think that. That is pure conjecture. Uh, and there's, it's one of the weakest uh, ideas in all of theology, the concept that uh, there's something in us that escapes and survives our death. So if that's not the case, then my consciousness is trapped and he is going down with me. <laughs> within probably a, a fairly recent, so fairly short number of summers yet to go. Okay, after the uh, home of good, and, uh, after that comes the home of good and evil is the next principle. That suggests that um, good and evil do not, are not, do not permeate the universe. There is no good, you know, uh, oh, you know where the sun, sun is rising on Pluto and there is no, no evil um, at the event horizon of a dark hole, or anything like right or wrong permeating the empty space between the stars. it These are ideas that human beings develop and maintain. These are opinions that we have that um, are most firm. Excuse me. I did take my allergy med, so that should help these ideas are most firm, though, when they're grounded in anything that's objective. So, for example, we can objectively uh, uh, observe and state that it is not good to uh, jump more off of a building more than maybe one or at most two flights up. You probably hurt or break your legs if you go any higher or die. Those are, in terms of that's not good and evil, that's right, that's bad and that's, that's good and bad. That's not right and, yeah, that's good and bad, right? It's a bad thing to do if you want to preserve your health to jump off a high height. <laughs> that can be objectively demonstrated as so. It doesn't mean that there's any rule chiseled in any tablet anywhere that's saying, you know, thou shalt not jump off a height greater than one story. <laughs> it's just an observation of the way the universe works. It's not, it's descriptive, not prescriptive. Okay, next is um, the principle of purpose. There are three purpi in my life. These are, uh, number one, to work together with my wife to raise our daughter to adulthood, to get her out into the world on her own safely and well-equipped with to handle life, and then to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> and to be there to help and support. So raising children is is probably the only purpose that I would say is objectively something that we are here we are here for we it's not like we were formed i don't think anybody formed us to 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 make children but but the fact of <clears throat> producing offspring and getting them to survive is the mandate and the mission that keeps this 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 wheel this energy this circle of life going you know it's just we wouldn't life wouldn't continue if that wasn't somehow a mandate of 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 living all living things do just that if they don't they won't be around and they're not around <laughs> the ones that stopped doing that or didn't do it well enough so i think that's a, that really is probably our only true mission so if there's one thing excuse me if we want to fulfill 
some uh, universal mandate. <laughs> universal sounds pretty extreme. It's probably to, to, ha to have children and raise them. The second uh, objective, the second purpose in my life is to uh, be a good human being, where good is defined as someone who improves the well-being of thinking creatures in particular. Um, relieves suffering and improves happiness. In a reasonable manner, right? I mean, there's some suffering that... It may not be... We may not want it, but it may not be... There may be no reasonable way to... to stop it. Some things are outside of the scope of our ability to control. Next is um, the principle of nature. No, atomic principle. Everything has little, everything is made of bits and pieces, atoms. And it's good to remember that because I'm also just a bag of atoms and uh, will soon fall to pieces after my consciousness winks out after death. My biology stops functioning. Then comes the uh, principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature, and it's good to recognize what that is. And then the pirate ride. I mentioned before that I do not believe that free will is, is real. I don't, I don't think we have free will. I, I, I think we can make choices, but strangely, the choices that we make are the only choices that we could ever make. Stuff that in the pipe and smoke it. It's a tough one. Can't prove it. I suspect it's true. Next is um, uh, maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. We are mature when we remember our successes and failures and have the strength and resolve to do better. Now comes the social principle. We are social animals. We need each other. And it's best to uh, do things that... Um, you know, most of the time, at least, uh, are cooperative and community and focused. Then uh, uh, the public speaking is the next principle, and the idea that of um, being very careful in our communications, both written and spoken, very deliberate in the words and the phrases that we use and how we compose our sentences <coughs> and paragraphs um, to speak. Um, little if we can get by with little and to never ever ever gossip next comes uh, temperance and the idea of controlling our consumption less work or not less work but enough work enough play enough sleep enough food enough drink etc there are two sub principles there uh, three actually suffering simplicity and apathy a temperate life is a life that we will have to endure some suffering when we deny ourselves what we want it is also a simple life by definition because we're having less and it's a life that involves apathy where we recognize what is outside of our control and let that pass next comes the horror show the observation that life is chock full of terror a horror actually and that it's happening now all around us, and it will, if not already, if not now, it will come for us as well. The next principle is um, that which must be born. And what we have to carry is the fact of the horror show and the fact of the responsibilities that we've assumed, especially those responsibilities that relate to um, uh, the commitments we've made to our families. Just have to bear them. Eventually, maybe you'll be, we'll be lucky enough to find a, some escape valve, some chance to retire away. Now, um, sorry, there was a little thing that came up on the screen. One thing at a time, Kurt. <laughs> no multitasking. Next comes uh, uh, the Feast of Oval. It's what happens when we get upset and we blow up into the world and let everybody know how upset we are. It's not a necessarily a good thing. Well, it, it soils others. It splatters them with our upset. And it's also not good to, to consume that upset. That's why I call it a feast. 
someone else is having a rough day and they're they're blowing up a little bit. You know, it's not often, but it happens. Then we're consuming that up and it soils us. It's better to use a little apathy to let that go and maybe maybe offer them a towel. Next comes uh, two principles that kind of go together. One is <clears throat> distraction, and then um, the agency and the great indifference. Distraction is what we spend our entire lives doing uh, as soon as we're old enough to start thinking clearly and taking control of things on our own. We distract ourselves through our school and our work and our play and our family and our TV and our sports and our church and others. And what do we distract ourselves from? The seeming empty, the great indifference, the seeming emptiness of the universe. Really what it is, is uh, an, a, if the apparent fa a fact of a universe without overarching guiding uh, um, um, agency, no God apparently running things, we appear to be on our, alone, on our own, alone in this universe with our pets and all the other animals and plants on the earth. We seem to be a little biological speck. Nothing seems to be looking out for us. We're on our own. That's what we distract ourselves from because we don't want to see that. Because that means that it's all on us. There's nothing, and there's nothing to follow after death. It's a lot to swallow. More on that in a bit. Uh, the next is um, uh, what is next? Oh yeah, the best seat in the house. To not want to be anyone else be anywhere else or be doing anything else but to be okay with who I am, where I am and what I'm doing right here, right now right who? <laughs> all the while striving to improve then comes the path of wildness it's a way forward, upward into and through new life a way to, uh, to create successive chapters in life to not become stagnant in the, in the one that we've found ourselves in path of wildness is, is easy to find. It's the course of a stream, leaves blown in the wind, a beast tracked through the brush, and the direction of our first inclination. And our next inclination, my wife and I, is that after Emily is out, we're going to go back to Japan. More on that in a second. The great life adventure. Okay, um, after the path of wildness comes the risk of avoiding risk. There are surface level risks in life and then a very deep one. The surface level risks are uh, education, job, family, home, security, children, of course, and planning. Part of the security one is planning for your retirement. These are the, the challenges that we're all faced with within our adulthood that we're largely encouraged by. Our family is going to encourage us to tackle these. Our institutions, our school, our church, our job are all going to encourage us to do this. It's pretty, it's not hard to attend to these. It's hard to do well sometimes, but it's not hard to at least be focused on these. We can spend our whole lives on these. There's also a deep risk. That's the risk that comes if, typically when we're younger, we feel some draw and curiosity to find ourselves, as the hippies would say. If we don't attend to that, it tends to haunt us as we go forward. And it gets more difficult to attend to the longer we wait. The time to attend to the deep risk is in our 20s. Uh, go to school, get our degree, and then give ourselves the rest of the decade for ourselves to attend to finding ourselves, so to speak. And uh, when 30 rolls around, then we can come back and begin to work on the surface level risks. It's a it's a life plan of sorts. It's not for everybody. Some people aren't aren't uh, interested in that. I used to say that my wife was not interested, but I realized utterly I was utterly wrong. She came to America because she she wanted to attend to the uh, that deep level risk, and that's how we met each other, and we've been together ever since. And I just she really it was really just this weekend she and I were talking, and she corrected me and said pointed out. 22 was the age when she realized that, that she was drawn to that deep risk and needed to attend to it and did. We have so much in common. I didn't think we had that in common. I don't know how I went 50, 30, 35 years together without realizing that. 
I'm such a silly man. Okay, so that's the risk of avoiding risk. Next comes a, a sin and damnation. In this good life creed, there are seven sins. These relate to belief and gossip. The first six are the belief-related ones. These are, well, one of them is not belief. It's just being untrue. <laughs> Falsity, being untrue. Credulity, believing things too readily. Uh, uh, faith, believing things where the foundation of the belief is the belief itself, which doesn't make any sense. Circular. The next is um, uh, superstition, believing things that are categorically nonsense. Dogma, believing things because of the weight of weight and inertia of the tradition, uh, and uh, being impressed by you know big canonical text, for example, and uh, and uh, stained glass and all that kind of stuff. Then comes um, authority, uh, believing something because of the charisma or the the force or the uh, or the support of uh, some figure that's saying so. And then the last could be, uh, is gossip. Talking about others in such a way that we would be embarrassed if they overheard us, what, heard what we we're saying. If we're doing that, then we're gossiping. I almost gossiped yesterday. I caught myself. I was going to uh, text something, and I knew that I was on the wrong path when I uh, was someone that, at work. And, um, and I, I was going to switch from the work text because it was personal related, I was going to switch to the phone so I could text them on that. And I realized, oh my gosh, Kurt, you're doing that because you're, you're, you want to make sure nobody hears what you're about to say. You're about to gossip, because I was going to talk about somebody. You're about to gossip. De delete, delete, delete. Put the phone down, back to work. Because it's a sin. And the consequence of these things is damnation in the here and now, because I don't think there's any afterlife. Next is, uh, the next principle is complete oblivion. The suggestion that once we're dead, that's it. There's no afterlife to follow. Um, and if there's no afterlife to follow, uh, no heaven or hell, um, no forever with Jesus, no forever with Buddha, no, uh, no re 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 recycling of life other than our atomic, other than our elements being reused by other creatures. Um, no, what do you call it? Um, rebirth. Reincarnation, none of that. Since there appears to be nothing after death for our consciousness but uh, oblivion, that means we're not going to see our loved ones again. We'll never see grandma again. We'll never have a chance to reunite. I'll never have a chance to, to tell my wife sorry if I die or she dies first with any unfinished business um, for whatever I need to say sorry for. <laughs> and um, there'll be no justice because um, Hitler Hitler did get away with his sins. He you know, well, well, he's dead, but there was no punishment for it.